Hey, how's it going everybody? This is Waze back with another video on the channel. In this video, I'm going to be quickly showing you how do you do debugging efficiently in VS Code for your Angular application. In my experience, a lot of people still do console log for debugging, even in VS Code. Now, what's the point of doing console log when you have this debugging capabilities in VS Code? So this is for those people who are still stuck with console log. And I'll show you how you can set up debugging in VS Code for your Angular code. So I'm going to go and open a terminal and create a new project quickly. Our project is initialized. I'm going to open that in VS Code. Let's go and start our project. So I'm going to do npn run start. If you're on your project for the first time, it's going to ask you if you would like to share anonymous usage data to Google. I'll just always say no. Now the project is building. So at this stage, our project is running. If I go to Chrome and I go to localhost 4200, I can see the Angular default application is up and running. But right now, if I go back to VS Code and try to do a breakpoint, so I go to app component.ts file and I'm going to do a breakpoint here. Okay. And I'll go back to Chrome and then refresh. And you can see the breakpoint actually don't trigger in VS Code. So to be able to trigger this breakpoint, what you need to do is go to this debug tab, go here, click on add configuration. Here you would like to select Chrome launch and for your URL, change that port to 4200. Okay, once done, then you're going to go into the list and select launch Chrome. You can rename this if you want to say debug Angular application. It's up to you. You can rename that. That's not a problem. Once you select that in the list, click on this play button. What it will do, it will create a new instance of Chrome and it will look for all the breakpoints. So now let me just put, put them side by side. And I can see before our application load, you can see the debugging happening in your code. So I'll click on this resume button and then your project loads. Now to demonstrate that a little bit better, we'll just create a function here, say log to console and I'm going to say console.log hello debugging okay so it refreshes it is going to just um, stop at that debug point so I'll just gotta click here to run the code now I'm gonna disable this and I'm going to call this function from one of the UI so let's open app.ts file and somewhere in our HTML Let's go down here. I'm going to simply create a button. So let's go and create a button there. And I'll just use a click event. And let's say log to the console. I'm not sure what was the name of the function. So log to console. Okay. And we should have a button. Now I'm going to actually cut this and remove this gibberish from here. I'll save the project and you'll see we don't have anything now. So we'll just paste the button there so we can do a log. So now if I click on this console, uh, log to console, you will see if I do a breakpoint here, it will log to the console. But before you do that, just click on the log to console. Nothing happens. I'm going to open the Chrome debugging and I'll click it says hello debugging hello debugging right so if I do a breakpoint there you will see if I click now it will point you back to VS code and stop the code execution right at the breakpoint you can see the values of what you're doing in the left so here you got this locked console I'm going to just click on that and then you see the value currently value is debugging for this title property. Now let's do one more thing. I'm going to just say value. Okay. And that can be a string. So from here, I'm going to just log the value and 
and let the code run this time. And we go back to app component.ts file. I'm gonna pass in hello debugging. Let's save that. And now if I go ahead and click on lock to console, you'll see it'll stop there. And if you wanna know what is the current value in your code for value, you can hover over and you can see you're getting hello debugging. You can also take a look at the values on this sidebar couple of buttons that I would like to talk about here, which is this one, which resumes the code. Next one, I'll just hover over to this. It will tell you what exactly it does. It steps over, it stepped into, it stepped out. So what is the difference between this? So let's say we copy this bit, okay? And I'll create another function. Let's say second function and we are just doing console.log from second function, okay? And then what I'll do is I will call this function within log to console. So let's say second to function, and then we can just call it. I'm gonna do a breakpoint here, and I'm gonna do a breakpoint here. And let's resume the code. Now we've got three breakpoints. I'm going to click on log to console and you hit the first breakpoint. Now this button will resume the code, which means it's gonna go to the next breakpoint. Let's click on that. Now let's say you want to actually go ahead and then execute the next block of code instead of going to the next uh, breakpoint. What you can do is you can click on this step into, which will which will take you inside that function. Now, if I click on step into, it's gonna go inside that function and then we'll log what values available in that function. So you see the difference here? Now I'm just gonna let it run. And next time when I click, I'm going to resume. And then this time I'm going to step out, click, and now you see what happens. It actually didn't get inside this function. It just executed it instead of just getting inside that. So step out is basically, it's gonna just keep you within the scope of the function instead of taking you to the next function. So let's resume. Now let's say I'll do a breakpoint here and I will stop this breakpoint. Let's click on log to console and the first breakpoint hit next, it's gonna go inside that function, right? Because there was a breakpoint and this button takes you to the next breakpoint. Let's click again, and then there's a the next breakpoint that it hits. Now, for example, you would like to run every single line of code and you wanna pause on every single line. So what you can do is, I'm just going to remove the rest of the breakpoints except this one, and I'll click on log to console. And this time I wanna go to the next line. So what I'll do, I'll just click on this step over. Let's go to the next line. Click on this, it goes to the next line. Now, because this is another function which has its own scope, if you wanna get inside that, you need to click on step into. Click and that goes inside that function. Then you click on step into, that still stays there, but execute the next line. You click on step out, which will take you back to the main function where you had this uh, breakpoint. Now let's click on step out, and now you see it is taking you to the main function that will call this because there's no other breakpoint. But if you kept going with this step into, it will execute the next line, or you know, step over will execute the next line as well. I'll just click on continue to finish the breakpoint. So there was a quick tutorial about how do you do debugging properly in Angular code using VS Code. And after watching this video, I hope you stop doing this console log to see the current values because that's just a time waster. You can do a breakpoint directly in your code and make the code stop there for you to look at the current values. Hope you liked the video. If you did, subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up. And I'll speak to you guys in the next one. Cheers.